My name is Nonstop Antonio, and I've been watching Naruto for the very first time, and today we're finally going to talk about the final section of the Chunin exam arc. I've been splitting up my videos into three separate videos because the Chunin exams are so freaking long, and I wanted to make these videos easier to digest. The first video was the first two parts of the exam, the second video was the prelim fights, and now the third video will cover the Jiraiya training and the tournament which this section was a lot of fun with that training with naruto and i liked meeting jiraiya and how he was called the pervy sage and i also really liked meeting gamabunta so let's jump into the training and tournament part of the chunin exams Welcome to Nonstop Antonio, where I talk about everything nerdy. I love Marvel, DC, and anime, and if you do too, I hope you enjoy this video. I really like how this training section started and how Kakashi wanted to train Sasuke so he could deal with the curse mark. He sends Naruto off with Ibusu, which we met earlier in the first arc, who was running around with Konohamaru. And I love how Naruto beat him originally with the sexy jutsu. And when Naruto told Kakashi that Kakashi just looked at him like, wait, what? And Ibusu's like, no, 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 it's fine. When that never happened. And I love how the training started because Naruto did not want to be trained by Ibusu. He just kept bothering him until he's like, you know what? If you can outrun me, Naruto, you can train with Kakashi. And then they played that little game, but Naruto just kept losing in the end anyways, until they met Jiraiya. But during that section too, it was nice to see that Ibu Ibusu learned that Naruto is not just a kid with a demon inside him, and that he can be a true hidden leaf ninja, which I really like, because they really showed how this character thought bad of Naruto this entire time, and then grew to like, oh, you know what? This kid's not that bad. I misjudged him. Jiraiya's intro was really funny, how he just kept being called the pervy sage, and Naruto literally called him that the entire time, which was just a lot of fun. And I liked their training too, how he was trying to teach Naruto to use his chakra a little bit more and actually able to control it. However, it was definitely weird when Naruto used his sexy jutsu, Jiraiya got over it. It's still a it's still a kid. He's still a boy and he's still a kid. And that's just so weird. But Jiraiya did end up taking that seal off Naruto, which ended up working out well. However, I don't understand what the point of putting the seal on Naruto in the Forest of Death was. Because he just got it removed not long later. So it's not like Orochimaru really did anything in the end to Naruto. Because Naruto was fixed by Jiraiya in the end. And I like how in between the fighting, we find out that Orochimaru and the Sand Village are trying to take down the Leaf Village. And that they have this whole plan coming. To try to kill the Hokage. And then Gara kills Dosu because Dosu tries to kill him. And then they kill Hayate because Hayate was watching them. Which starts setting up what the arc is going to lead to because by the end of it, it leads into a war of the Leaf Village. But let's get back to the training part because that just kind of happened in the middle just to kind of lay seeds for the next arc. Because I like how Jiraiya teaches Naruto to summon the Toads. Naruto can only do a tadpole the entire freaking time. And I like how Jiraiya's like, okay, if we want to get you to summon something bigger, we have to get your emotions running high. And he asks him like, who do you like? Who do you love? And Naruto's like, oh, I like Sakura. So he's like, okay, go hug her. So he tries to go do it and Sakura just freaking decks him, which I love when that happens. It's always a fun moment when Naruto gets decked because of Sakura. <laughs> but the only way to get the nine tilt Fox Chakra to actually activate is by Jiraiya almost killing Naruto. And I like how he's like, how are we gonna do that? And he just freaking pushes him off a cliff to his death, which I thought was, was kind of funny. It was pretty funny, but also a very cool moment too, where Naruto comes face to face with the nine tailed Fox with him and makes a deal because if Naruto dies, so does the nine tailed Fox. So he makes a deal to let him use his chakra, and that's where he summons Gamabunta, which is the chief toad. And I love how Jiraiya's like, oh shit, he summoned Gamabunta. I gotta, I gotta stay hidden, I wanna deal with him. And he, because he's the chief toad, and I love how Gamabunta's looking for Jiraiya. It's like, where is he? I know it wasn't you. You're, you're just a kid, you didn't summon me. And he doubts Naruto the entire time. I really love how Naruto shows his determination to prove that he's good and that he's strong. His determination is what makes Naruto like a really good character, because he's never backing down. He's always ready to do what he needs to do, and he wants to be the best. And that's what he's gonna be. And I love how he holds on until he's exhausted. And by the end, Gamabuta does respect him. And he's like, even like that Naruto's father was the last person to hold on to him for as long. Which I think is a cool tie back that Naruto's father also summoned the Toads. Which I'm like, we'll get more about that later, I'm assuming. And I really want to learn more about Naruto's family's backstory and what's going on there. Also, there's a bunch of hospital stuff that happened too, which I thought was really interesting. Seeing how Rock Lee was recovering and how he left his room to go and train. He was doing push-ups outside until he passed out of exhaustion. But I like that. It shows that he's not giving up. He's injured, but he's still going to try to train as much as he can and then we also learned a little bit of gara's backstory because he was trying to finish off rock lee and that he had that hunger for death and i kind of understand now why gar is the way he is after that backstory or how he was when he was a kid he got a sand spear put into him which turned him into a monster and his mother died when he was born and his father trained him to be a killing machine but then that killing machine became too much so then they tried to kill him and it's just very dark showing that this kid has a very terrible backstory and if none of that shit happened he probably wouldn't be that bad if he had 
actually had someone who cared for him and took care of him, he probably wouldn't be the bloodthirsty killer that he is right now. And I like how Naruto kind of sees a parallel with him because Naruto also had a demon put inside him and Naruto can relate about being isolated and everything, but Naruto never had someone try to kill him. And that's probably a little bit of the difference where Naruto still had some people who cared about him in the end, but Gara had no one. So you have the two different outcomes. Gara is like the worst case scenario about what Naruto could have turned into, which I really like the parallels there. I'm looking forward to seeing more of them in the future because it sets up parallels and where they're both gonna go. I feel like Gara is gonna come around eventually because of Naruto. And I'm looking forward to that. Now let's get to the final fight. This is where it had some good moments as well. Like, like the prelims, they had another good moments. Like there's not as many fights. And some of them ended very quickly. But then we get a very good moment with Naruto and Neji. And I really looked forward to this fight because of what he did to Hinata. But also the fight wasn't just about the fight. We learned a lot about the Hyuga clan and Neji and what, what happened to him. I actually really liked And I didn't hate Neji as much as I did prior because it made me realize that Neji had a shitty upbringing. In and that's the reason he's such an asshole. And the fight was pretty awesome showing Naruto losing because Neji can use his Byakugan to block all the chakra points on Naruto, but he doesn't realize Naruto has two sections of chakra, so he wasn't able to block them all. And in the end, Naruto was able to trick him by digging underground and uppercutting him in the end, which I thought was a great move. I am a little disappointed though that Hinata never got to watch the whole fight because she passed out, so I am interested to finding out what's wrong with her because it never got resolved by the end, but I liked how the fight really showed how smart Naruto is because Neji thinks he had him the entire time. Naruto is getting hit left and right, not able to do anything, but Naruto knows how to use his head. And I like how he tricks Neji because he uses a Shadow Clone Jutsu and like goes after, after him looking like he's keeping himself back. But instead, Naruto kept a clone back and he ran in head first to try to trick Neji into thinking that the clone that was staying back was him. But the whole fight, Naruto was determined to beat Neji because of Hinata and Rock Lee inspiring him and how Rock Lee may never get to fight his rival, which I love that, showing how other characters are affecting Naruto, just like how Naruto affects all of them. And I thought it was interesting too, and Neji thought you couldn't fight Destiny because of his upbringing. And he even turned around to Naruto and he's like, you don't know what it means to be branded with a mark that'll never go away because he has a mark on his forehead because he's supposed to be the one taking care of the main branch family, which I thought, Naruto has been treated as an outcast his entire life because of the freaking Nine-Tailed Fox. Naruto has it way worse, and he knows exactly how you feel. And then, like I said earlier, Naruto taps into the Nine-Tailed Fox chakra and moves stupidly fast and is able to beat Neji. And I like during this too, because this is one of the big moments for Naruto, because he finally gets recognition. Everyone used to doubt him, and they see him win this fight, and how strong Naruto can be, and they realize, well, shit, this kid isn't a joke. He is actually really good at what he's doing. He can be a good ninja. And I like how everyone kind of realizes that they were wrong about it. It's a good moment. And I love when characters get their recognition and everyone realizes how wrong they were. Now let's talk about Neji's past. I specifically didn't talk about this during the fight so we weren't going back and forth. I wanted to talk about it after because the key detail in this fight was Neji's past and why he was fighting. Because we find out that his father was Hinata's father's twin brother. And I thought this was really interesting because Hinata got kidnapped when she was a kid by another clan. Hiyashi, her father, killed that guy. But then they tried to turn around and be like, oh, we didn't try to take her. You killed him for no reason. So they wanted Hiyashi's body to settle the blood death. But instead, Neji's father took that place and died instead. I like how it's like, it looks like Hinata's father's an ass. He gave up his own brother to live and all this other stuff. And then we find out after that his brother did it himself. It was his choice to die the way he wanted to. And I I like how Neji learned that at the end, showing that his father didn't die for no reason. His father chose his own way to die, so he had his own way out rather than just kind of dying in a meaningless way. And it meant that he could choose his own destiny and that him dying was his freedom happening. And also telling his son in a letter, now it's time to forge your own destiny. Neji kept saying that he wasn't going to challenge Jesse. There's no point. And now his own father left a message saying to challenge your destiny and do what you want, which I think that was a good moment for him to realize that now he needs to step out and be his own person. Which also means he'll probably die. So maybe Neji will be less of a dick after all of this, realizing his father chose what he wanted so he can also choose what he wants to do. Then the fight with Shikamaru versus Tamari was interesting because... I didn't realize how smart Shikamaru was until this fight. And I thought it was really interesting how they dealt with it, how Shikamaru was playing it by calculating where the shadow was going to be, where Tamari was going to go, and how he could get his shadow possession to reach her, and how he went underground to grab her. And in the end, he almost won. He was very smart about it. He was doing really good. And I like how his sensei even commented on him, how he could be a great leader. He may not be the best ninja, but he would be a fantastic leader, making sure his squad gets in and out without anyone dying. And I feel like that's foreshadowing his journey in the future, showing that Shikamaru will probably be a good leader. 
he just won't be the best fighter which i'm interested to seeing how they deal with that going forward because i feel like that'll be pretty cool to see him lead if he's this, he is this genius level iq and i think he can make some pretty cool battle plans and i like how he's so close to winning and he just gives up because he realized that his chakra was almost up but at the same time it would be way too much work if he won and he didn't really want to do it so he's like yeah i quit i was like are you kidding me i'm like you were about to win except that whole section just showed how smart he was and i really liked it but now we finally get to the gara versus sasuke fight and i love how kakashi and sasuke after not being there the entire time show up making a cool entrance and sasuke's got a little bit of a new look to him and i even love how they comment they're like do you have to make a cool entrance like we're finally here let's start the fight but i like how when gara is heading down to the fight you see him murder two people right in front of Shikamaru and Naruto, and they both sit there shocked because they're like, if we were two seconds sooner, we would have been killed because they couldn't have fought Gara. And it really shows how strong he is and how strong the demon in him is and how willing it is to kill. But it did lead into a cool fight with Sasuke and showing how much Sasuke has improved over the short time, how fast he is. It was cool to see Gara make a sand clone. But Sasuke was so freaking fast that it didn't matter. And I like how Sasuke is fighting him kind of with Rock Lee's technique. Really showing how Sasuke's sharing gun has helped him learn a lot. And I'm intrigued to see what he's going to learn in the future with other moves. Because he's already picked up a few fighting styles so far. I can only imagine what he's going to learn in the different styles he's going to be able to pick up with his sharing gun. My favorite moment from this fight though was Sasuke using the lightning blade that Kakashi used when he killed Haku in the first arc. And that it was called a Chidori. 1000 birds. I thought that was a very interesting name that was just like a lightning blade. But hey, it looked freaking cool. And I like how it makes Gara bleed so it makes him freak the F out. Because Gar has never bled before, so he's losing it because of it, which was insane. But of course, that's where the arc ends, because the assault on the Leaf Village starts. And everyone gets put to sleep, the Hokage looks like he gets blown up, and the village looks like it's under siege. That was a really abrupt ending, and I thought it was going to be like a little bit more transition into the next arc, but no, it's going right into it. And we'll talk about when I finish it, because it's only like 12 episodes. But I am intrigued, because they did summon something, and I want to know what that is. So I gotta watch the next episode, so after I finish this video, we're going to watch more Naruto. But overall, my final thoughts on the exam arc it was really good the fights were awesome and i know they're only going to get better but like the character moments and how they developed during this arc was fantastic showing sakura get a backbone having rock lee show his determination how he won't stop hinata learning how to be stronger not back down and naruto taking in everything he's learned to be a better person and finally getting the recognition that he deserves and honestly surprisingly my favorite fights weren't even with sasuke and naruto which i thought they were gonna be other than naruto versus neji but i mean like the main fights prior to the final ones because easily my favorite fight was gara versus rock lee the animation was awesome and it really showed us a lot with rock lee as a character but i also really like hinata versus neji and how hinata would not back down and then Sakura versus Eno because it showed Sakura developing as a character. We also have some big changes for Naruto and Sasuke this arc because Naruto can now summon Gamabunta and other toads and Sasuke can now use lightning blade moves super fast and has a curse mark on him and has to deal with Orochimaru. So I'm, I'm intrigued. I am so excited to see where this goes because I feel like there's just endless possibilities right now for what's going to happen. Especially because I have no idea what's going to happen. So please don't spoil it for me. But I think the next arc is going to be pretty intense with the village being under siege and I'm looking forward to seeing... Uh, what shit happens because i feel like someone's probably gonna die next arc is gonna be konoha crush arc i think i pronounced that right i hope you guys enjoyed these three-part episodes for naruto uh, let me know what you thought about them followed my journey along while watching this show i know i kind of mispronounce people's names or forget them but there's a lot of characters it's kind of hard to try to do it even when i write them down i somehow skip over them because i'm me but i'm looking forward to seeing where the next arc goes let me know what your favorite moment was from the training part of this arc as well as the tournament part again i hope you enjoyed this video hit the like button hit the subscribe button it helps the channel out a lot and you'll stay up to date with all my naruto videos i'm really enjoying watching naruto for, for the very first time so thanks for watching and i'll talk to you later